Hello there, my name is Jeff from CMAC. Today, I'm gonna to show you around these awesome video switchers that we have available for checkout. The Blackmagic A10 Mini and A10 Mini Pro. Today, we're only going to focus on hardware, but stay tuned for our other tutorial where we dive into the ATEM software. With that being said, let's get into what the ATEM Mini actually is. The ATEM Mini is black magic solution to video switching. Similar to the TriCaster systems that we use at CMAC, the ATEM platform takes in a variety of sources, such as cameras, and allows the user to switch between them and add minor effects such as lower thirds, picture-in-picture, -picture, and even chroma keying, or green screen, as it's called. Unlike the TriCaster systems that we use in our studio, the A10 Mini is smaller, simpler, and more user-friendly overall. Now there are two versions of the A10 Mini, the standard A10 Mini and the slightly more advanced A10 Mini Pro. Because you know, it's meant for pros. The standard A10 Mini is best for simple applications where your cameras are locked down and the operator, or TD, is familiar with each camera angle. This means that you don't need to monitor each angle at once since they never change. You'll also need an external encoder like OBS on a computer in order to live stream with the standard mini. I recommend that you check out our tutorial on how to use OBS if you plan on live streaming with the mini. The A10 Mini Pro, by contrast, can be used for more advanced applications. The Pro version features everything that the standard version has, plus a few extra things. This includes a multi-viewer, allowing you to monitor every source, a built-in encoder, allowing you to live stream straight from the Mini Pro without something like OBS, and finally, the ability to plug in an external hard drive and record straight to that. Now, let's move on to ports. The ports are exactly the same on both A10 Mini models. However, some ports have a few extra features on the Pro version. First, we have our two 3.5 millimeter audio inputs. These can be set to either mic or line level within the ATEM software. Next are the four HDMI inputs. This is where you'll plug in your cameras or even other computers to record their screens. After that is our one HDMI output. On the standard mini, this can output a preview feed, program feed, or even HDMI 1 Direct. This is designed for console gaming, allowing you to input your console feed and then output it to your TV with little to no latency. On the Pro version, the HDMI output can also be used for the multi-viewer. Onward, we have the USB-C output. This can be used to connect to your computer, allowing you to control the Mini within the ATEM software. The USB-C also acts as a webcam output. Basically, this means that applications like OBS will read the USB as a webcam, allowing the ATEM to be used as a video source. On the Pro version, this USB-C port can be used to record straight to a hard drive. It's important to note, however, that you can't use the webcam feature while connected to a hard drive. Next is the Ethernet port. This can be utilized in a number of different ways. Mainly, it can be connected straight to a computer to control the ATEM via software, just like the USB-C port. It can also be connected to your network, like a router for instance. This is required for the Mini Pro to live stream. If your computer is connected to that same network, this would also allow you to control the ATEM remotely. Finally, we have the locking DC power input. This is where you connect your power. It has a handy thread that can be used to lock the cable in place so you don't accidentally remove it while broadcasting or recording. That's pretty neat. Now that we've looked at the ports, let's move on to the buttons. This is where things start to change between the Mini and the Mini Pro. First, we'll start with the standard Mini, and then I'll show you the different buttons on the Pro. So here we have the standard A10 Mini. So we'll just go from left to right uh, on these buttons. So at the top here we have our audio controls for our mic 1 and mic 2 inputs. Uh, on, we'll obviously turn that channel on, and off, we'll leave it off. And then we can also adjust how loud or how quiet they are with the up and down arrows. Then down here we have all of our source options. So each of these columns lines up with their respective source. We have 1, 2, 3, and 4. These are just our HDMI inputs. On top of each source button, we have AFV, which stands for Audio Follows Video. When this is on, the audio will only play from that source when you are on that source. So for instance, if I was on camera one with AFV on, 
then the audio from camera one would play, but as soon as I switched to camera two, the audio from camera one would cut out. If we want the audio to be persistent, we just simply need to turn it on, and then we can also turn it off. And then again, we have our up and down arrows to change how loud or how quiet our audio is for each individual source. Moving all the way to the, well, I guess middle here, we have still and black. Still will play a still color uh, that you choose within the ATEM software, and then black will simply just go to a black screen. Next, we have our picture in picture buttons. Picture in picture is basically displaying one source on top of the other. So let's say you're recording a game, you can have your background as your video game, and then on top of that, you can have your webcam. So right here, you can choose where on the screen that picture displays, and then you can also toggle it on and off. Next to picture in picture, we have our key on and off. This is how we enable our upstream key. This is where you'll activate your green screen within the software, but we'll get into that in the software tutorial. Under that, we have all of our transition settings. We have the duration to change how long the transition is, and then our various effects, such as our slide, our push, and then mix and dip. Dip will go between a color. So basically, if we were dipping from channel one to channel two, it would dip to that color and then go to channel two. And then we have mix, which will mix those two sources together before it transitions to the next one. This is basically like a crossfade if you're familiar with editing. Under that, we have our transition button. So we have a cut, which will just hard cut in between sources. Auto will take uh, into effect these settings up here. And then FTB, which stands for fade to black, which will, as you can imagine, fade to black. Here on the A10 Mini Pro, it's pretty much identical to the A10 Mini with a few extra buttons here on the right. So first we have our record button, so we can either start the recording or stop the recording. Under stream, we can go on air and start live streaming and turn the live stream off. Under that, we have video out, which allows you to change what is displayed on the HDMI output without having to do it through software. We have channel one, two, three, and four. M slash V stands for multi viewer, and then PGM, which is program. Now that you know how to use the ATEM hardware itself, join me in the next tutorial where we dive deeper into the ATEM's capabilities through the software. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. If you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to check out our playlist of other tutorials. You can stay up to date on all things CMAC by following us on social media. Learn how you can become a member with access to equipment, editing tools, and other resources by going to cmac.tv.